Ahmed Abujarade is the founder and executive director of Life in My Days, as well as an engineer, a world traveler, a peer support specialist, and a novelist. He's a mental health and social justice speaker and specializes in starting difficult conversations in communities. His piece is titled, Life in My Days. Hi, good evening. So I thought about what I wanted to talk about for a long time. I have lived with mental illness my entire conscious life, and I have had more diagnosis than I can count on a single hand, not because I was being misdiagnosed constantly, but because comorbidity is a reality for many of us living with mental illness. I have lived with social anxiety, major depression, body dysmorphic disorder, general anxiety, PTSD, and finally, bipolar II disorder. Each illness has become an integral part of my life with its own challenges and its own rewards. But the more I thought about this, the more I realized that I wanted to talk about one of my lesser known illnesses, body dysmorphic disorder, a disorder that you wouldn't imagine me having for two very different reasons. The first is you've probably never heard of it. <laughs> and the second is, and more important, is because I am a male. When I speak about this, this disorder, I am often told how beautiful I actually am. What people don't realize is that by saying that, they're upholding the same toxic environment that gave birth to this disorder in the first place as they're still focusing on my physical appearance. You see, body dysmorphia is a disorder of fictional defects. When I look in the mirror, I don't see what you see. In fact, I don't actually know what you see. BDD took a hold of my life at the age of 12 years old. I remember one day, I kept looking at a mirror for hours and seeing things that made me a monster. But even prior to that, uh, as young as the age of seven, I remember in second grade, someone had taken a picture of me in a field trip to a zoo. To a zoo. I got rid of every single copy and destroyed them. I will not go into the details of the defects I see on a daily basis looking back at me, or the horrendous things I would do to try to change those monstrous defects. I shouldn't have to prove my illness by telling you the specifics. But what I do want you to focus on is this reality. BDD has the highest rate of suicide among all mental illness. You might be wondering why, and honestly, the answer is pretty simple. We live in a, in a society that tells us that beauty is reflective of how we are as individuals. I mean, think about it. How many individuals will easily say despicable things about somebody's image because they deem that they are bad? Right? We see it in politics. We see it in everyday life. Actually, the day I wrote this, a friend of mine told me that Donald Trump is an orange troll. And in my head, all I could think of is that that's me, right? That's how people view me, that I am the troll. And if the sun hits me in the right angle, I'm also going to be orange, and then everybody's going to hate me. So how has it impacted my life? Self-love is critical to recovery. It's also critical for uh, self-development and almost everything else within our lives. But we're taught that we are unlovable if we are not beautiful. And so self-love suffered. Although I don't know for certain which of my disorders threw me into suicidality or which of the combination of them, I know BDD made it much easier for me to get there and still does to this day. But I can also say that BDD has honestly saved my life. You see, that's the most interesting part about mental illness for me and comorbidity. You never know which parts of the illness is going to affect you negatively and then which parts might actually save your life or make your life even more fantastic than it already is. During my sophomore year of college, I woke up in the middle of the night and went from being fine to suicidal. I can say for a fact that I would not be here standing in front of, me, in front of you if my reaction did not also inflame my BDD. 
It inflamed my BDD to the point that I truly believed that I was so monstrous that I did not deserve to die. Now, it's such a terrible thing, thing to think about, but this was the only thing that kept me alive that night and allowed me to seek treatment afterwards. I learned then that I had PTSD and started working on healing from both PTSD and BDD. As you can imagine, my sophomore year was a critical year in my life, not only because of my treatment for both PTSD and BDD, but also because it was the first time I was face to face with the reality of not only my mental illness, but also how society views it. See, I personally did not know a single person living with a mental illness until a few months prior to my PTSD. And that knowledge, honestly, that this wasn't my fault, that it wasn't me, was one of the main things I relied on for my recovery. Because knowing that it wasn't me, recovery was an option. Whereas prior to this, believing that I was the problem made recovery impossible with my, without my removal. As I started healing from my PTSD, I realized that my engineering school was not having conversations around mental illness. And so at the time, I started uh, doing programs around mental health and specifically focusing on programs where individuals can share their personal experiences around mental illness. About six months later, I became the president of the Active Minds chapter on my campus. And slowly, I realized that my school was not unique in the fact that they were not having these conversations and actually had become the exception in starting to have them. So I started supporting a few other schools in starting these conversations. During my senior year, I wanted to find a way to continue my work after graduation. I met an incredible individual in Worcester who was doing some amazing work, and I became a founding board member of an organization called Muslim Community Link that works with the most marginalized within the central Massachusetts area. Then last February, I started a site called lifeinmydays.com. Initially, I wanted to build a space where individuals from all around the world can share their personal experiences in a safe space and know that they are not alone. This website grew internationally in a way that was very unexpected. So seeing that, I knew that this had to grow beyond just me. And so earlier this year, we actually launched as a nonprofit. So today, I am still an engineer, but I'm also running life in my days. And today, we not only have the online social change platform, we also work directly with communities to start difficult conversations around mental health and disabilities, abuse and trauma, and social justice, and more, most importantly, the intersectionality of them all. Because like my story shows, they're all so connected, just like we all are. So for me, mental illness wasn't the end. It was an entirely new beginning, one where I have been able to build something that reaches over 100,000 people worldwide. But most importantly, I am here. I am me, and that is the greatest accomplishment I can ever have. Thank you.